Hi everyone, and welcome back to Simply Neutral. In today's video, I want to share my views on traditional art versus digital art. Before I get into it, I think it would be nice to share a little bit about my own art experience, just so you know where I'm coming from. So, I've mainly worked with traditional art materials. For most of my adolescence, I worked with dry mediums and inks. My sketch recording days didn't begin until junior year of high school, so before that, I used to take a bunch of printer paper, fold them in half, and bound them with staples. When I was in college, I majored in fine art, which opened me to new art mediums such as ceramics, charcoal, oil pastels, acrylic, and more. I fell in love with painting with acrylic on canvas, and it became my main medium for several years, even after I had graduated. Then when I discovered Urban Sketch around 2011 to 2012, I began painting with watercolor. This medium took a lot of practice, but once I got the hang of it, I found a technique that worked for me, and I was addicted to painting on the go. Once I got the hang of painting with watercolors, I ventured out into gouache, which became one of my favorite mediums because it was a really nice in-between watercolor and acrylic paint. I didn't spend too much time with digital art throughout high school and college. The only experience I had was making vectored illustrations on Photoshop. I found drawing digitally to be quite hard to learn because I was overwhelmed with what brushes to use and all the various tools on Photoshop. It got frustrating for me, so I eventually gave up on learning. I slowly eased myself into working on Procreate in 2019, but it wasn't until last year at the peak of quarantine when I decided to dive into digital art. I've had my iPad for a couple years now and had only been using my Apple Pencil for writing. After some research, I managed to find a Procreate watercolor and gouache kit and since then I've been so obsessed. Alright, now that you know a little bit about my art experience, here are five differences between traditional art versus digital art. Let's start with traditional. Number one, it's tangible. Even though a drawing or a painting is two-dimensional, you can feel the texture of the paper, canvas, and paint. There's nothing better than a paintbrush to paper. This is honestly one of the best feelings ever, and I'm sure a lot of artists would agree. Also, mixing paint is truly a fun and magical experience. Number two, it doesn't rely on technology. When you're creating art, you don't have to worry about charging any devices. You can draw and paint anytime without any interruptions. You just need the right lighting. The only time you would need to use technology is when you need to scan your piece onto your computer. If your painting is too large to scan, you would need to use a camera to photograph it yourself. Number three, it creates a deep connection between the person and the artwork. The first thing I think about are going to museums, art shows, and events. I love going to museums because it feels like I'm traveling to a different time in history. I can spend hours examining a particular painting and being fully enamored in every stroke and detail. You get to learn about the story behind a painting and looking at it as if you're watching a film about it. When I look at a painting, I can imagine myself walking inside it and living life in that particular era. One of my favorite memories at a museum is when I went to Paris back in 2012. I did go to the Lavoie Museum and I saw the Mona Lisa painting up close. I thought about Leonardo da Vinci and how long it must have taken him to complete the painting. I wondered about his creative process and what his studio looked like. Through every painting you see at a museum or an art show, you get a little piece of the artist's soul. Number four, versatility. When you're creating an art piece, you're free to use a variety of materials to add more dimension. The act of making art with your own hands and meshing different mediums together creates a very unique experience. You can use found objects, recycled material, or fabric. The possibilities are endless. Number five, it helps increase your problem solving skills. A great example of this is when you're painting on a large scale and you're painting a portrait or from real life, you'll need to take some time to make proper measurements and think about the right composition. When you work with your art materials, there's this deep connection between you and the medium. You learn how certain mediums work on different surfaces and how they react when used in conjunction with another medium.
Now let's move on to digital art. There are a lot of things that I've found from creating digital illustrations. Number one, it's less waste. Creating digital illustrations means that you can create a huge body of work all in one device. It frees up so much space and adds less clutter to your home. Number two, extra tools. The great thing about digital art is that you're given so many amazing tools that you can't get with traditional art. There's an undo button, a plethora of brushes, you can duplicate layers, it's easier to find the color you want, and the list goes on and on. You have access to all these tools within seconds. All you have to do is tap, tap, tap. One of my favorite things about digital art is that I can easily add text. When I used to urban sketch at coffee shops and I would draw the menu, I used to use a white gel pen. It would be so annoying having to make layers of it to brighten the text, and when I would scan the image, it would look so messy. So I love writing on my iPad because you don't have to add so many layers, and it's easy and clean. Number three, instant shareability. Digital art allows you to instantly share your art all across your social media, and you will receive feedback from others within minutes. You can of course do this with your traditional art, but it might take a little longer. Number four, flexibility. Now these tie in with number two, but I love that you can move things around, resize an image within seconds, you can add layers, and you can erase without leaving a mark or indentation. Number five, you save money. Now yes, you're spending money upfront on an iPad or tablet, which can get really expensive, but you'll be saving money in the long run. You don't have to go to the art store every few weeks or months to get more paper or paint, which will add up. Sure, you might have technical difficulties and might drop and break your tablet, but with extra care and protection, you won't have to worry about that too much. Another great thing is that you don't have to spend time and money on a scanner. With digital art, all you have to do is save it onto your device and you don't have to worry much about color correction and removing dust. So those are the five differences between traditional art versus digital art. If you were to ask me what I prefer the most, I would lean more towards traditional. Traditional art will always have a special place in my heart. There's just this type of creative magic within traditional art that I truly connect with. No matter what you prefer and what materials and tools you use, know that the human hand can create beautiful art. Any form of creation in itself is amazing. Your work and skills can't be replicated in your unique style and technique. Both are really great in their own way, and I love that I can alternate between traditional and digital depending on my mood and what I want to create. I believe there is no right or wrong medium to use. Find what works best for you. Now I'm sure I left a lot of things out, but if you're an artist that works with both traditional and digital, I would love to hear what you think. Do you prefer one over the other or do you appreciate both? If there are any differences that I haven't mentioned in this video that you'd love to share, leave a comment down below. Alright, that's it for this video. If you found this helpful, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and in the comments down below. If you haven't yet, subscribe down below and be sure to click on that notification bell to stay up to date with all my future videos. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to my monthly newsletter, I have a link down below for you. As always, live simply. I'm sending you all so much love. Take care. Bye.